business economics, maybe you do uh, engineering, you do, I don't know what, with one element which is maybe international, that will help you. Of course, you could have studied something which has nothing to do with, with being international, of course. But then, if you have the chance, maybe you will have another degree, which is a higher degree, where you do something international. And what many of you here, well, those who I know, you have now, for example, you are in a, in a, in a program of Masters of European Studies. If you are in Masters of European Studies, it means that you are doing something or acquiring knowledge which is outside your, let's say, mother domain. And uh, you're coming from many different countries, coming to Germany, so you are already international without defining it as such. So do not feel that you, you are not international business people and you are trying to learn how to become one. You are already there, being here, doing this, you are already on the right way. Whether it's good or not, I don't know. You're on the way. <laughs> now, so this is another aspect, is your, is your education. What you study, what you do. Of course, you can study history, for example, which, is, which could be very international, and spend your whole life in one museum in, in, a, in a small village in Germany, and do your whole <coughs> life there, and the only thing you do is visit Mallorca maybe once every year. This is, you're a good person, you're very productive, you might be very rich, but you are not <coughs> international, of course not. Now, the third aspect, which I feel is very important. Well, every aspect is important, but this one is very important because, well, that's what I feel. Is your character. I think we as persons, we have to be prepared for an international atmosphere. Can we prepare ourselves? Yes, we can. Uh, do we have something innate? Are we born with a character which is uh, ready to do it? Yes, you have to. Because if not, the other part will be very, very tough. I'm not saying you will not succeed, but it will be very, very difficult. Uh, I know that many of you do agree. Now, what does that mean that you are international? It means you are talking to people first with a different language. Is that right? Most probably. Most probably. So if you are coming from Greece and you want to do business in Ecuador, it is very probable that you are neither talking Spanish nor Greek. Okay? In good old days it was French, it's over. Now it would be, I think, English. Does anybody not agree on what I say? Very nice. But still, but still, and look what happened today, just a coincidence. I didn't prepare anything. See, I just come and tell you stories. You know, uh, we had a nice lady, is it Kate? Yes. yes, Kate. I talked to her now and when she was trying to tell them what she wants to say. Well, she's very lucky because everybody speaks her language. You come from the States, right? Yes. So everybody is very, she is very lucky because, you know, if you speak many languages, you are polyglot, you know this, right? Or polylingual, if you speak three, you are trilingual, two, bilingual, one language, you're American. So, <laughs> So now, Kate, she, she, asked, she asked a question, she asked a question, and while she was talking, I told Felix, do you bet? Then I'm going to understand a single word. And they did not understand. And she repeated, and while, while she started repeating, said, do you bet that they will not understand? And he said, no, okay, and that happened. And then I told her, you have to articulate when you talk, and slowly, because the other guy is not a professional English speaker like you. And that applies, sorry, not against, not against it. it is, and this applies not, not only to this case, it applies also to any one of us. So if you are speaking any language, any language, whether it's your, especially if it's your native language, and if somebody comes and tries to show you that, aha, uh -huh, look, I speak Bulgarian, for example, and you start shooting at him with all sorts of Bulgarian dialects, or I don't know what. I mean, you're, you're not going to come together. It will not work. Of course, you can, stay you can stay stubborn and say, well, if they come to me, they have to learn my language. Okay? But you won't have business, no? I mean, it would happen, but there's no business in that. France, for example, is a very good example. 
the French people, you know that they do not like to talk English. Well, new generation, they have to because they have no chance if they don't. But they don't like, and the, and the attitude, well, I know that because I come from that culture, so uh, the attitude is, well, if somebody comes to France and wants to do something with me, they have to speak French. Very nice. Then somebody comes and they do not speak French. Well, if you keep your attitude, that's it. There is no business. And we all know that we live on paid invoices, no? We do business, we send an invoice, and somebody pay, pays money for us. That's it. Unless you do it just like a caritas or another one, which is not the case here. So, this is the third aspect, I said, which is your character. So it will be first is to anticipate what the other person wants to say. How to do that? Well, I am lucky because I was born in a multinational family. So my father, my mother, and my other relatives, they do not come from one country, which is, which is good to me. I don't want to miss it. But this is not a standard, so it's not all of you will, will have this situation. Now, if you grow up and you learn at school in your individual countries, what will happen afterwards? Most probably you will learn a language, is that right? I think all of you. And now there was a question here, I think. Was you, Marta? Yeah. You asked, Ma Marta had a very nice question. I mean, she's in my class now and she has very nice questions. She asked, <laughs> what, what, would, what do we have to learn if we want to have something in the EU, right? Uh, other than, of course, English, French, German, Spanish. And what's the other language? I mean, that's it. <laughs> Marta, if you know this, that's fine. Maybe you learn Italian instead, but whatever. Well, that leads us to an aspect where if you know languages, you already won half of the battle. And I have to admit, I wasn't a brilliant person and I haven't been very successful in, in everything I did in my life. But my, one of my assets, personal assets, was that I speak many languages. And that's why I was always sent to take care of a project in Italy because I speak Italian. There were many people who were much better than me. They were more successful. They were higher in the hierarchy. And in fact, I wasn't that important. But nobody spoke Italian. And now, it's a very easy thing. I mean, uh, just an example, Filippo here, he's an Italian. If, if somebody comes to you now, and I don't know when, he comes from, let's say, Chad, I don't know where, and speaks English to you. Well, if anyone speaks English very well, they speak English and they like each other and they go, maybe he'll take him to a restaurant and uh, I, get, I don't know how many courses, four courses, meal, it's great with wine and everything. Now, if that same person comes to Filippo and tells him, you know what, I speak Italian, I learned Italian, and before doing there, I know there's a restaurant where La Mamma does that, you know, and he gets spaghetti together and that's it. Wouldn't you like doing business with that person more than doing business with me coming like that and talking officially to you? Who does not think will think the same in your own country? Very nice. Very nice. Nobody. So, languages. Learn any language you think you like. I mean, of course, English is a must because if you don't speak English, we have a problem. Uh, other languages like French, Spanish, um, it, Italian and German, of course, they are important languages. And Russian, do not forget Russian. If you speak Russian, they will still do business with you in English. But Russian is very important to talk about anything else which is not business. And those who know Russians will agree. Those, right? Of course. Right. And those who do not know the Russians, you cannot go and do business. Uh, anywhere and start saying good morning my name is so and so when will the order come and uh, i sent you an offer yesterday because you had an inquiry and uh, i don't know what it doesn't work this way it doesn't work this way there are cultures like russia for example where they talk to you hours about whether maybe traveling well, I'm not going to tell you all what they ask you about, but among others. <laughs> until they feel, until they feel, they tell you we have to be friends before doing business. Well, not only friends, but the, the message is that people have to know each other. And then all the other things will work. That will be no problem. If 
if, of course, things are fine. I mean, you cannot go compete with somebody just because you can blah, 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 talk too much, you will get a business. This is not what I'm trying to say. Good. Is that for minutes? Yes. There's another thing, as a character. Well, I, I, well in, I cannot, in 25 minutes, I cannot tell you all what happened in 25 years, but uh, I, I just chose this aspect of a character because of an, uh, education and all that, you can do it anyway. I mean, you, are, you have very good diplomas and you are good universities, etc. And I cannot control your chance, so I hope that nature or God or the, or the sky will help you uh, be at the same, at the, good, at the right place at the right time. But as, as a person, uh, you have to be, all of us, we have to be open-minded. That's very nice, open-minded. Yes, I am open-minded. Open-minded means that you do understand what your partner wants to say. Uh, in my course, those who have my course, and many, I see many faces here, uh, there's only one hour where we talk about that. For example, uh, you know, gestures or movements with hands or fingers. Do not underestimate this. Do not underestimate this. If you ask how was it yesterday and an American does this, it means it was great. If a French man does this, it means it's zero. It's not good and you think that he was very happy with you. No, he was not. <laughs> so, when you, when you do business, you always be yourself. You do not have to change yourself, but try to respect the other's feelings, the other's traditions, and what they want to say. Now, uh, if you go and talk to somebody, do not use expressions that are not standard, you know? For example, those who speak German, there is an expression in German, for example, which says, uh, it fits like Faust of Auges, it means like, well, it is very good, it fits like, like a fist on the, on the eye. Not good to translate that in any language, because in German you <laughs> understand. I mean, if you come from a... Uh, uh, German culture, well, Austria or, or Switzerland or Germany, you would understand. But I mean, if you translate this to any other language, to Spanish or to, I don't know what, uh, or Romanian, that would be very, very funny, right? Good. Uh, what does it take to be also an international, well, a successful international businessman as a character? Who can give me some examples or some, whatever? What does it take? Give me another feature. Being empathic. And Being? Empathic. And yeah, but this is how God created you. You cannot change it. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you work on yourself, but it, is, it helps, of course. It helps, of course. So, again, just to wrap up the whole thing. Uh, to be an international businessman or manager or businesswoman, it, you have to have, well, there are three issues. Again, it is a chance in your life like everybody else. The second is, I think, that your education, what you do when you start. Usually when you start, you don't know where you end, but at least you have your first diploma, and then you know what you want, so you do the other one, one degree higher, and that's exactly what you want to do. And then, if you are prepared as a person to accept what the others want to say, and to respect their culture, even if you don't accept that, even if you don't like it. Uh, and always remain yourself. Know some languages, uh, visit countries. Uh, there are many issues. If you visit a country, for example, uh, whatever, let's say Nicaragua. You visit uh, Nicaragua, for example, <laughs> here, and you want to do business with her. It is really good if you know what's the name of the president of Nicaragua before going there. Don't you think it's nice? Or to know at least what's the capital of Nicaragua. So it's not New Mexico, the capital of Nicaragua. Or to know a little bit about the country. I don't, I don't, I'm not telling you go and have a research on that country. But two, three days before you go, it is always nice to read a little bit about the country, to know what's happening. At least to know, is, it, is there a king there, or a queen, or a president? For example, the name of, of a big river will also be nice, so that they see that, uh -huh, you know, you are interested in their country, because Nicaragua is not a country where we meet every day. Is that right? I mean, who's, who's been to Nicaragua here? One, two, three. I'm going to ask you what you did there, but not now. <laughs> okay? So, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening.